Welcome to this video tutorial on thoracentesis. Thoracentesis is a procedure in which a needle is inserted into the pleural space to remove fluid or air, biopsy the pleura, or instill medications into the pleural cavity. The pleural space, or pleural cavity, is the tiny area outside of the lungs and inside of the chest wall. It is between the visceral pleura, which covers the lungs, and the parietal pleura, which is attached to the chest wall. There is a lubricating fluid inside the pleural cavity that allows for smooth inhalation and exhalation of the lungs. So what causes pleural effusion, or the buildup of fluid in the pleural cavity, leading to the need for thoracentesis? There could be conditions in which the body is not handling fluid properly, such as congestive heart failure, the most common cause of pleural effusion, and kidney or liver disease. Also, inflammation from pneumonia, bacterial, viral, or fungal infections, lupus, and other autoimmune diseases. And there are other causes including cancer, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, and tuberculosis. The procedure for a thoracentesis includes the following steps. Number one, explain the procedure and obtain a signed consent form. Emphasize the importance of not moving or coughing and breathing quietly during the procedure. Two, assess the patient's respiratory status and vital signs, including pulse oximetry. Number three, position the patient upright with their arms and head resting on a bedside table with a pillow. If the patient is unable to sit, they may be placed in a side-lying position on the edge of the bed on the unaffected side. The thoracentesis needle is usually inserted in the back, over the diaphragm, but under the area of fluid. Number four, sterile technique is used, including gloves, antiseptic prep, and drapes. Number five, during the procedure, monitor vital signs and the respiratory status. Monitor for increased shortness of breath, hypoxemia, tracheal deviation, which are signs of pneumothorax, hypotension, bloody sputum, and vasovagal reflex. Up to one liter of fluid may be removed. Number six, at the end of the procedure, a small sterile dressing should be placed over the puncture site. Vital signs should be monitored and a chest x-ray may be done to detect possible pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. This is an abnormal collection of air in the pleural space, which could be caused by air coming in through the needle or the needle making a hole in the lung. If enough air gets into the pleural space, the lung can collapse, which may require a chest tube. To help prevent a pneumothorax, it is important that less than 1,500 milliliters of fluid be removed at one time. If the fluid is completely drained at one time, needle laceration of the visceral pleura and the lung is more likely to occur. Hypovolemic shock, due to a lack of circulating fluid volume, can occur when more than 1,000 milliliters of fluid is withdrawn. This causes syncope, or fainting, and shock. Therefore, monitor the patient's vital signs immediately after the procedure and every 15 minutes until readings are stable. Another risk is pulmonary edema, or fluid in the lungs. Pain, bruising, bleeding, or infection where the needle was inserted may occur. Though a rare occurrence, liver or spleen injury can occur with needle insertion. After the procedure, teach the patient to avoid strenuous activity for a few days and call their healthcare provider if they have any of the following. Fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Needle site has redness or swelling or has blood or other fluid leaking from the site. Shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, or chest pain. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on thoracentesis and be sure to subscribe and like us on Facebook.